Okay. All right. Well, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, again, I welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today. Um, we've got a fairly short meeting today. We're going to go through some uh, public hearings of our budget and do some other things. So, again, I welcome everyone. Um, I'd like to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, first order of business is going to be the adoption of the agenda that you have before you. We have a couple members that are out today, but we do have a quorum. So um, I'll need a motion to entertain the uh, agenda. So move. Second. Second. A motion and a second. All in think? favor say aye. 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 So, so. Your minute, you're going to show up a lot in the minutes. <laughs> so everything we want is going to get adopted today. So that's how it works. So you put us okay. All right. Uh, next order of business is the approval of the minutes. Uh, the, these are the April tw uh, 28 minutes that are before you. Um, are there any changes or any errors that you saw? I did not. It's okay. my turn. I move that we accept the minutes right. as published. And I second. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> any discussion? <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. Okay. Um, next uh, uh, order of business is item number five. We're going to do a, a budget public hearing. Uh, the, the budget duplicate informed to previous years was presented to the authority. Uh, at April uh, 28th in our 2016 meeting, it has been available online and in print. A public notice was published noting the disavailability as well as setting the date for the public hearing. Glenn? We are going to give a quick overview because it is quick. It is the simple, the amount that's been estimated as for collections in the, in the next fiscal year, less the administrative fee as allowed by law. And then the formula says it must be a two-thirds distribution for tourism promotion and that you may spend one-third <coughs> one or what's left on tourism-related expenditures. And that is your budget. I wish all budgets were that simple. So. <laughs> uh, yeah? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Do we need to open a public hearing? Open a public close hearing. The regular session going to. Yeah, we need to close the regular session and we'll open the uh, public public hearing. And if anyone wishes to speak, we have a chair right yeah, there. Is anyone here to speak? Anyone on the budget? Okay, we will close the public hearing and reopen our meeting. You have before you a budget. Very good budget. <laughs> I need a motion to adopt. I so move, Mr. Chair, to adopt the budget. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Glenn, do you want to talk about the... Uh, I have that in the rest of the agenda when we're going to go okay. on through okay. the... Um, Spending plan issue. That'll be fine. Okay, so we'll move forward to budget consideration. Did that. That's done. Item number seven, strategic work of the authority. Um, item number seven in your packet. Glenn? We want to talk about the partnerships. We This slide is the same one we showed you at the last meeting, and I wanted to let you know that we had actually effected uh, the video and placement within the website for the state. Uh, we had um, the crew that was down here shot some wonderful, beautiful shots, including this one, um, this nighttime um, shot of the Vietnam Memorial, all nicely lit and such there. And um, these will be available through our, our dis normal distribution channels for anyone that wishes to use them. And we're very impressed that among the people who wanted to speak about the community partnerships and the feeling of um, receive a hero's welcome um, was Colonel Tim Salmon, who is the um, outgoing commander of um, the New River Air Station. He spoke still as the commander at this time, and so um, he gave a, a wonderful interview that will be included in this, um, in this video that will be put up at the site of the Visit North Carolina Tourism. The other items that you saw listed, they'll be, as you mentioned, as um, we funded for last year, we're proposing those to be funded out of the next year's budget. And that's all I have on that. 
you wish me to continue, I can do that. Yeah, let's go All to right. item number eight, the regional and military city opportunities. At your last meeting, um, we gave you this proposal for the um, livability index in which your community is postured um, is a great place to live and um, be and such there. And um, we were unaware that the contract called for a five-year agreement. And so we wanted to make sure you folks were, were good for that. After talking with them, we've come to a three-year agreement. And there will be a non-appropriation clause in the agreement. So should you not appropriate the money, you would not be held to those years two and three. It does take time for some of these things to have traction. And then you have to have it up so that people can reference it as it was. Because once you do these stories, do these things, um, they've got to reside somewhere. And so that's what you're really paying for is to build that library um, of, of stories, those libraries of promotional pieces that you can that you can refer to. Additionally, it was thought that this might be something that we would um, do in connection with the military host cities. And so we're proposing to speak to the other um, communities in the state who host military operations about their potential involvement. The company, Journal Communications, has proposed um, a whole set of guides about how to find a good place to retire if you're in the military and to emphasize things that we have, the resources that are available in communities that host the military. This, again, would be something that we'll be doing in collaboration with our county partner and that we would um, advance and share with others. So what we're asking for you is to... Um, to repeat your motion that would authorize the chairman to enter into an agreement with Journal Communications for the enhancement program targeting visiting and military visiting and retiring in our community for an amount not to exceed fifteen thousand dollars for FY seventeen, and to agree to consider the program for each of the following two years. When when will we see some of their work? It, well, obviously, once we sign the agreement, they'll go forward with the work, and so we would expect to see something in about three to four months. Three to four months. Yes, sir. Okay. How are we going to measure the success? Interesting you should say that. One of the easy ways to do it is Google Analytics, in which we will simply see how Jacksonville, North Carolina, gets postured by others. And there's, a, there's also a, a reliability and reputation indexes that are out there, too. And we can tap those and see how Jacksonville's image has changed over time. Okay, I, I would suggest that... Um, we have that information available to us before we decide on years two and three. Absolutely. Or certainly two. <clears throat> so although it's a commitment, we still have to allocate the funds for it yearly, and they understand that if there's no fund allocation that we have an out clause in the contract. Is that correct? As, yes. There'll be a non-appropriation clause. Non-appropriation clause. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. It's in the agreement. We don't have to make no. it part of the motion. No. 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 You're, you're, the man to your left will not let you sign that without it. And this Could woman over here. There's modification to the agreement in the package. As we just got this yesterday, I believe, or whatever. So there's an indemnification clause. We've got to look at several things. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. What's your pleasure? Um, <clears throat> I make the... Uh, motion to enter into this agreement for the first year um, and part of my motion will be to review um, the items to help us decide whether we're going to have years two and three and your motion included authorizing the chairman to sign the agreement oh yes yes, yes. in light of that I'll second okay all in favor say aye aye, aye. motion carries Okay, Tourism Promotion Fund, FY17. Glenn? All right. So this is the where we, um, we changed this meeting to allow us to have this conversation. And I must tell you that um, we've, um, we've had some interesting um, um, arrangements as a result of this. And I think that this is a, a process that has provided great benefit to our community as it is. I do want to mention to you that one of the other authorized activities that you did was the Meeting Max program. And we have entered into um, the um, Sports Commission actually has 
process the, um, the, the agreement to purchase it. Uh, there came to be some issues about the city um, purchasing that agreement. So they will actually purchase it and pay for it. We will reimburse them, and they will operate it for us as it is. And that's one of the, um, one of the items that we think is so exciting about being able to have some empirical information about how people, uh, how people book rooms and do things like that. Now, I'm certain in this first year that we'll, there'll be some growing pains, there'll be some changes, there'll be some apprehension, but I think that many people who have been experienced to this Meeting Max program tell us it's such a benefit um, to do this that they, they, just, they find it a great value to their community. So toward the end of the strategic um, plan, we, we went and uh, along the way decided at your last meeting that you wanted us to go ahead and convene the strategic initiative. If you recall, we proposed to you back in February that you actually have a, a, a session that is looking to the future about what things could you do that would enhance tourism in Onslow County. What activities? And this was just to throw some things out. This was the conversation about the tours, the base. This was talking about river taxis. This was talking about doing anything that you could do that would enhance that visitor experience or would drive immediate overnight stays from actions that would be taken from this as it was. But it was also seen as something that might not have overnight success as much as it is that it's a strategic plan that says follow this plan and they will come. They will be here as it was. So you asked us to put together um, a panel to help review things that, um, that have that panel review matters as it was. Now what they got to see then were these, seven, these 15 applications, 10 of whom were returning. Um, two of them had previously applied but did not accept the funding. And then we had an operating one for seeking some expansion, some totally new ones. And we had the Museum of the Marine Events, um, which kind of got changed um, while it was in process here with, uh, with us as it is. Total ask was $251,500. And again, as we said, that some people did ask for some things other than marketing, but you had already said that we couldn't do anything but marketing, so we're dealing with those items as it was. We previously told you about the panel that was the outside the county panel that involved um, seasoned tourism professionals. Um, they had experience with large and small activities. And then we put together a, a panel that included some people that have run events in Onslow County and that they were knowledgeable about the um, authority goals and had a passion for overnight stays and quality events. And then this third panel was the strategic initiative panel. And originally the idea was is that we were going to take the ones that you had funded and put them in front of this panel and ask them to see how their, how their program might be enhanced by some ideas that they came up with. So we, we retained them for that purpose, and they provided some very deep information. And again, it was um, very much praised by many of those who were at the table for that day of activity there. And it's part of the overall strategic plan. This is the panel. Um, we, there are five professionals, um, and um, we got a twofer in the Morgan and John there, but um, we were very happy to have them. They offer some unique perspectives as it was. Um, these are people who have had significant background and years of experience in, um, in tourism or tourism-related activities, um, and were able to translate that experience into beneficial suggestions for our community. They did have a lot to say about community activities versus tourism development projects. And it's kind of been an, app, you know, an elephant in the room with us at some time that we, we like a lot of our community activities that are not turning over um, you know, a lot of overnight stays. Um, and then we have some things that are really clearly um, tourism events that produce overnight stays with lots of visitation. As mentioned, and I can't say it enough, they came up with a lot of great ideas. And they had some strong suggestions about some things. Um, they also had a real concern about capacity. There were th at least three events that proceeded to tell them about that they were outgrowing or had outgrown um, the place where they were going to be. That the, once they top out at a number for that place, they can go nowhere else. There is nothing else available for them in this community. And so that was something that was a real concern to the panel. Um, who I think would have snapped their fingers and built something for us, but um, that wasn't in the, within their power. And then they're concerned about those constraints um, for growth and in the case of um, the operational 
um, parts of some activities that they had with what volunteer staff they had or with other things that some of these activities that have been going on for some time didn't necessarily have the people that were associated with them that could go and make the next thing happen. They needed other people brought in to help them out as it was. The consideration of funding is, is that everyone that applied has a pathway to funding. Um, we considered the future value to tourism in our conversations with the panel members. We asked them to um, um, be aware of your emphasis of management and your emphasis of having a tourism development plan that lets them see a clear path about how they'll contribute to the mission of what the Tourism Development Authority is from that matter. So from that point, um, the uh, authority's guidance obviously has been that management review and the assumption is, is that you would continue in your future spending plan, this is of course at your discretion, that there will be some funds available in the sports development fund to help pay for some items that are out there as it was. The, um, the what work they did, they reviewed each of the applications and they have decided that there's some things we have to do after this. One of the things is, is that we have to develop a better way of asking the applicant as to what is the value of the Tourism Development Authority applying. If it's for money, that's not what you folks want to do. You want to market events for overnight stays. Um, if it's to drive or to create something, that's been the mission of what you have gone forward with. And again, that goes to the Tourism Development Plan. We have to make it much more clear in the questions we ask in future applications about developing those overnight stay plans as to what actions you will take that will actually affect overnight stays. And there's been various sets of evaluation. Some of these programs have done excellent evaluation documents after, their, um, after it's gone through, um, and some have not. Um, a lot of times their organizations have um, a capacity issue. Uh, you know, they've, they've put up tents, they've worked all day, they've done things, and the last thing they have to do is to ask someone to go around and take surveys as to what the visitor experience was or do something like that. So we're even going to propose some answers to help with that as it was, too. Toward the end of after action, obviously you want to read those evaluations to see what power the TDA's money had and what type of experiences the visitor had. And the panel suggested strongly that we have one-on-one -on -one meetings after every event and that it's contemporaneous. Um, as you know, um, you don't have any full-time staff, and so this has been difficult for us to propose that on our own here. So we're going to follow that at your direction, um, but um, that has been a capacity issue of your staff, as it was, too. Then to convene the panel at some regular times, it may not be all of them, it may be a few of them or something like that. It may be that um, they do it telephonically or Skype or whatever way that we do this, and that they actually talk with some of these people at, soon after the event, while it's still fresh, so you can still start planning for next year. And we want to change the report, once again, for the after action report, to more drill down to the information that we need about the tourism impact from the money spent by you. Toward the end of getting those evaluations in, um, we've mentioned to you before that we tried the docent program during the second Marine Division's parade, the 75th anniversary, and it was well received as an, a, a wonderful opportunity for some volunteers to go out and show people about our community and show them hospitality and answer their question and do things like that. Uh, we are aware of a proposal that will be forthcoming that will help organize the docents and do something, and we would offer those to each of the programs so that they can be there helping. Um, they're just going to be part of the official hospitality of an event, should they be desired. And they can also, as the event ends, they can take um, surveys as to what would be, what's the participant experience, what some things are there. And we'll rely on our tourism partners and our professionals to help us develop those type of evaluation documents so that that goes forward as it is. Documentation and promotional materials, and I have to thank some internal people to here to City Hall that we weren't completely describing this accurately. When we go to do another event, um, it's the second year of the Mike Lazera Festival. Um, we don't always have some good stuff to show as to what happened at year one of the Mike Lazera Festival. And so um, a documentation has been something that has been in the contract that we put with people, but we've not always got material that was suitable for use as promotional material for the following year. 
Now, obviously, the city has shot some of these events, and we've got some things, but you, we can't be everywhere all the time. And so we've got to work on getting material um, that we can use when, we, when Teresa goes forth and others go forth to promote these events. And we need to develop a long-range plan. Many of these events um, look only to the next year when they are doing their program. And what the panel is suggesting is that everyone in, along some pathway here develops something that's a five-year out plan, does something to say, what's the growth five, what am I going to be doing five years from now? What's 2021 look like? What's that year look like? And we want to reconvene the panel for FY18 and have, our, have a, a, a check as to what's going on and how things are from that perspective as it is there. So now the moment you've been waiting for is the recommendations. And I must say, anyone that's um, watching this meeting on air or uh, a TV or whatever, these are in the agenda that's alongside um, the matter there. And for people here, we have printed copies um, at the board, at the table here as it is. And toward the end of this, I am going to be using the printed version to speak to you. And the PowerPoint is going to have just um, limited notes there because obviously there's a lot more words than there are um, there to go. But I will quick attempt to be quick about this. So as mentioned there, we are asking the authority has to actually adopt the overarching um, uh, conditions. And so we're asking you to consider these conditions for adoption that after action reports be required, uh, that the meeting be required, and that the panel reviews the report at, see, at least sometime close to the time that, is, um, um, that's, that the event occurs there as it was. We are asking you to approve the outside evaluation that is a condition of receiving funds from the Tourism Development Authority that they would allow outside evaluation to go. We'll work with them and make this um, you know, as painless as possible, but the goal is to get information that they would benefit from in improving their event and listening to what, um, what, what, what their participants had to say about it. And we would, uh, this would be contingent on you actually funding the docent project there as it was. And that we note that many activities do evaluation and those that do it well, we wouldn't want to supplant that but offer our services if needed as a result of that as it was. All of your, at your last meeting, you told I me mean, at the meeting in um, January, you told us to develop an application that would only work for marketing out of the area. And that what we want to say is that unless specifically recommended, that all marketing will be for out of the area to build the tourism as it is there. And of course, I did mention to you already about the promotional materials, video, pictures, documentation, that we need those. And of course, we're willing to share anything the city shoots or does or whatever there, but we, we're going to need much more material um, out there from this as it was. And that you'll be required to put any hotel bookings through Meeting Max. Um, they would be on contingent on the final arrangements with the Sports Commission. We left that opening just so it would be there. And, of course, the many bookings that are already done, um, they'd, they'd stay in place. And as I said, we don't know how far along um, we're going to get in this implementation this year, but we're hoping that we can get this moving quickly as it was there. So those are the recommendations. And what we're going to um, 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 ask you for, these are the ones that were previously adopted, marketing only, that you have to book through the agency that you hire, no payments made directly to the organization, and there's some other timing issues and fiscal matters that are contained in the contract that have always been in there before. And um, what happens now is that we would like you to consider these for adoption, and if you, if you so adopt them or tell us that you want to do that, we'll go on with the recommendations for each of the activities. Open the floor up for discussion. Well, I'll start off by um, <coughs> commenting that it's great to have an outside, outside folks um, making some of these awards because <clears throat> they can put a different eye on it. So that's a real plus, I think, for us. Um, I did notice that they may, and, and this is just a comment. Uh, I don't care how people receive it. It's just a comment I make. Um, they basically kept most of the requests the same or increased them, which I found interesting um, in that they were able to look at this from a marketing standpoint or their professionals and say they need more than what they asked for. I, I found that pretty interesting um, from last year. 
from last year's request. Um, I think the follow-up is good. I just, uh, again, because of the limited staff that we have and the fact that we don't have a staff member representing us, I, I, <laughs> I don't know how you guys are going to be able to keep up with all this stuff, but I, I do appreciate the effort. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable with everything that's been presented. Well, right now, all we're asking you to do is to consider the recommendations for the overarching conditions, and then we're going to go into the individuals. Right. And if I may, uh, uh, one of your, your recommendations is adopt one or all or some. I'm in favor of adopting all of the overarching conditions. Well, I haven't got there. Forgive me. I've been unclear in my deal. These are the overarching conditions. I'm going to get into the individual items here in a few not, seconds. Oh, you're not? Well, I'm yes. just telling you. Well, okay, well, that's good news tonight. Yeah, I'm just telling <laughs> you. Know, if we want to just fly through them, we can do that. Yeah, you know? I mean, I, I don't believe in, uh, you know. Dragging it out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm just telling it like it is. I mean, I saw each and every one. These conditions came from neutral and detached third parties, uh, mm -hmm. which none of the locals had anything to do with. And I think any idea that we can get, that we, that we receive from them, is enhancing. And I like all the ideas because all it does is fine-tune, you know, um, tourism and essentially our philosophy of marketing. Uh, that's where, unless the authority changes, that's where the money is going, not operational, but marketing. And I think all these things are geared toward that. So well, I guess I already told you <clears> my <throat> vote. But that. And we have to have the accountability, and that's what's important for us. The after actions are, are extremely crucial for us. Mm -hmm. I and mean, we've got to identify, and I think the starting comment was community activities versus tourism development projects, and I think that says it all. You know, there's two two different items, and just because we may not uh, put money towards an event doesn't mean it's a bad event. We just have to make sure that what our work entails is um, tourism projects and that we can <coughs> justify those projects because we're actually putting heads on beds and that we're bringing people into our community. And as long as we can do that, then we're doing our work. But at, at any time that, you know, we have some drop-off or we can't quantify it, they have to come off. That's just how it goes. It doesn't mean it's a bad event. It just means that we can't put money towards it. And um, I think we have to constantly talk about that is because sometimes there's a perception that, you know, we don't like a particular project, and that's just not the way it is. It's, it's we have to make sure that our money goes in the right direction for the right reasons, and it has to be for marketing and marketing only. John? I had a question on one of the overarching conditions, Glenn, and that is uh, you have to get an outside evaluation. Is there any definition of that? I looked, and of course, one of the lower recommendations, and just could it be XYZ uh, event, happens to be a city event. City would have to get an outside evaluation. What would that cost? What does that entail? What are the details of the, what the, you're asking the TDA to? Well, first of all, if the docent program is funded, it would be provided by the docents. But, yes, but what we're, we're proposing is if there's already an established evaluation program of which we've seen results, there's no sense in reinventing the wheel. Now, should they want to use the docents to help pass out surveys or do something like that, that would be a welcome opportunity for them to do. There's a value in that some programs have been doing the same survey for many years. They ask the same questions every year, so they are able to track changes over time, and that's a value, too. And one of the issues, I think, for us is um, getting back to having staff members. Like, for example, the Sports Commission, Ashley and her team, is responsible for collecting data. And so on the events, she's responsible for having someone out there or going out there and making sure the data is collected somehow and then bringing it back to her board. We don't have any staff personnel. So when we talk about these outside sources that we're wanting to use, it's to offset that so that we get that data. And so, you know, again, it, if we had staff members, then we would obviously hold them responsible for collecting that data, but we don't have that at this time. So, John, does that, does that fit the criteria, or are you still in, I mean, we need to be sure that we're on the same. I just, as far as y'all have a clear understanding of what an outside evaluation is, mm -hmm. now that's where, I, where I'm at. I'm not, is that going out, me hiring XYZ to come in and say my event did such and such, et cetera? 
I don't think you know you probably want to put that no. take part of the eight thousand or That's whatever. That's an expense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're wanting it. Just the definitions. What I was trying to get at was an outside evaluation, so that everyone would have the same understanding of that term as used. That's all I was trying to get. And have the same opportunity to be evaluated the same way. Just a yeah. definition, so everyone would have an understanding. We do not want to add a cost to an event. So how will we define, I don't want to keep beating it, but how, how will we define it? Well, what we'll do is, is we'll offer, should the docent program be funded, mm -hmm. we'll offer docents to attend that event and then perform the survey. And that would be it? <clears throat> yeah, they, they would do the survey. But if that's a requirement... Well, the requirement is that you let in and outside, you let people in and participate with them, allow them to, in your event, to, to do that. To well. determine the information. This well, is, we may have some. Have you ever considered, and this may be just one other step, not necessarily having docent survey, but maybe smaller, like I'm thinking Jazz, you know, Jazz in the City. Have you thought about almost doing the secret shopper type setup, where you go out and we, you know, work with people? I've seen it done. University of Louisville did it for football games. Churchill Downs has done it, um, where they go through and contract. They get a free ticket to the event and stuff like that. So you don't know that that's what they're there for and they the whole entire time are just sitting there evaluating everything from how concession stands run to how they were greeted to the facility makeup to I mean kind of everything and I'm just thinking for some of these smaller events instead of maybe sending in a ton of people to take surveys of what I would consider especially John City an upper kind of upper class event mm -hmm. do you then in turn send in a secret a secret shopper to evaluate and it's someone that maybe comes in and we invite a tourism person from outside the community that's willing to just see what's going on use Kristen's contacts and stuff mm -hmm. like that I think that fit, fit the spirit of what the panel was asking for the panel was asking for some independent evaluation or just the the activity itself perform evaluation in an honest way yeah and I don't disagree with that it's just how you execute it and how do you require it and it's always in the details, you know. Is everybody required or is that, you know, self-initiated? You know what I mean? I guess yeah, John, and that, and John the, poses a, a valid Yeah, well, that's true. Question. You know, the, the, just for the public, you know, we're, we're, we're televised. Docents, D-O-C-E-N-T-S. Okay. Glenn, define that for the public. What, what are we talking about? Well, you typically think of docents as someone who walks around a museum and tells you about the paintings there. Okay. Uh, it has come to be in the hospitality industry, there's a number of docents who help you find your way around communities and to talk to you about what is the history of Jacksonville, where you can find the memorials, what you can do, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to create a cadre of people who have been given some training, some education, and some awareness of what our community is and where things are. Some of them might eventually end up as it was, um, you know, we're not proposing this time that they're... We know we have some informal docents at the at the Lejeune Memorial Gardens where people are talking about what's going on there. In the case of the Second Marine Division activity, we were able to tell them what the events were of that day and help guide people and show them around as it was. We had considered the word ambassadors, which is also used in that, but um, we didn't want to confuse it with the Chamber Ambassador Program, so we sought a different word. Right. Now, now Glenn... And, and, and I think Ashley is on to something because if I knew that there was a cadre of, of docents coming, or if I know who they are, A, B, C, and D, then I'm going to go ahead and put my best face on. I'm going to try to do my best as opposed to someone who is uh, kind of, you know, <laughs> uh, a secretive and, dump, and uh, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, more. And they can really catch you, honestly, not catch, but they can... Uh, you know, see you and evaluate you without any uh, uh, fanfare or anything. They can evaluate you more honestly, I think. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't you folks consider um, well, modifying the overarching condition to say to require some sort of evaluation? And we will offer a panoply of options um, and that um, as funding is allowed and we investigate more of the idea of what Ashley had, we would, we would implement that. Mm -hmm. But, of course, what we really want to see happen is these events perform their own honest evaluation. The secret shopper idea or something like that is a, is a wonderful idea, and um, it may be something that we're able to implement.
What do you think? Yeah. If there's, we won't, I won't push you anymore <laughs> to adopt those at this moment, but so we'll, we'll just go on to the recommendations. But while we, I do need a motion at some point to tell me what um, overarching conditions you wish put in the contract. And so that's, it's, it's your decision to do that. Um, but that's what we were asking for um, at that matter. Um, toward the end of the amounts, um, um, Ken hit that um, precisely. Um, these amounts were um, some people had excellent budgets or their program had been operated before and they had some idea of exactly what had been spent and things of that nature. And some did not have, um, th they did not have a professional's eye that had actually spent the money on some of the concepts. So the media, the, the allocation is, um, the recommendation is actually based on an actual media plan um, and how it would work for it, how effective it would be. And of course, one of the things that <laughs> will help us is if we do have some objective surveys in which we ask people, how did you hear about this activity? Um, that can let us know. I give an example to use John's um, point back on Susan Baptist and her event. She asked people, how did you hear about the events the city does? And she's had some definitely variant responses than what had been expected for some of the events as it was, and it's caused the city to take different actions than what it would normally have taken had they not had that information. So that's the value of having some evaluation. You want to test it, and you want to have it in some way that you can do that. And of course, it, it did, the, the recommendation for the amount was driven by your decision that you wanted this money mostly spent out of the market. And so consequently, that's where that is. So without further ado, we'll actually go through and we'll look at those, those, those activities that actually receive funds in this current fiscal year. And the first among them was Art Block. And of course, the, um, the Art Block um, is still considered to be an incubation activity. Um, it's not yet to full maturity. And its overnight stay generation has been very low to moderate, but it has shown some potential um, for making it greater. The recommendation is for $12,000 with conditions. Um, the largest majority of the panel members believe this event had promise, but there were some that um, had differing opinions about the next steps. But there was a consensus that the activity is still in incubation and formative in that regard. So the recommendations are to fund them for an additional year as an incubator, as this has a high chance of only being a local event, as a low to moderate outlook for future overnight generation. Fundings to be used for marketing, split between local and out of market, as this is a project that needs to grow. And they must develop a plan for overnight stay generation for this event and into the future. The strategic initiative panel suggestion was to combine this with Music Fest, which they were concerned might not be as practical as a first year freestanding event. And if the Arts Council wishes to have this funded in the future as a tourism event, the management capacity will have to increase, as they have admitted. The Arts Council should consider consulting or associating with professional management. The Arts Council should review other recommendations under development by the strategic initiative panel and seek to implement where practical. And I must say that as part of this, Future meetings of the panel will not cost the organization any funds whatsoever. That's not on their ticket. It'll be on ours. Then, um, oh, I didn't keep up with myself there. Forgive me. <laughs> All right, so we'll go on to Engaged Onslow Bridal Expo. And this is seen as a maturing event uh, with um, overnight stay generation very high. As a, you know, this one books uh, events into the future and it um, was recommended for $18,000 with conditions. They did want to consider the strategic initiative panel recommendations for tracking leads acted on after the date of the event. It was very clear to get how much money had been generated from the event when they were walking around talking with vendors, but sometimes um, there were uh, bookings that occurred later uh, for which the event was not getting credit for. Um, they are considering the recommendations for panels for enhancements, including ideas to generate additional overnight stays as part of the activity, perhaps some sort of visitation activity that happens. And this marketing money would be for regional use, as it was. For the annual charity ball, it's considered a very mature event. It uses a lot of rooms, and um, it is to suggest to be funded for 20000 with conditions. As you know, this one generated more than 400 room nights 
and um, participants get, get for $50 have meals, dances, events, and activities available to them. So there's a likelihood they're going to spend all the nights that they can with us as it was. Um, there was a, um, a, a special recommendation that this one would could benefit from the specialized um, PR firm that has been retained um, by this organization to help us with some other events that can help target some of the demographics that this, uh, this project attracts to. So for meeting, for the bookings outside of meeting max, they need to provide better documentation. And the reason we say that is because they already have bookings for their event that's coming up in the next year. And they've already got bookings out there as it was. People tend to book for the following year while they're still here in that year. Um, they, we suggest they consider the enhancements and recommendations for the panel, including ideas to generate additional overnight stays as part of the activity. And they should work collaboratively with a specialized advertising firm to advance the project. Jacksonville's Jamboree is considered a mature event. Um, it, is, uh, uh, it is, though, a community event. It, was, it does have high um, um, tourism impact with the number of rooms that are booked as a result of the Jamboree's athletic events. Um, their suggestions were that definitely it be funded for $15,000 with conditions, that it be considered as a community partnership, and showcase activities that would also um, help um, um, encourage visiting families to participate in some of the activities. They want a connection made between the athletic components and the festival component, the market, the festival to athletes and their families, as well in advance of the event as an enhancement to their visit of the community. And they want to consider enhancements to the performance um, of the, as suggested by the strategic initiative panel, consider other enhancements um, suggested to improve as a draw for the festival, and the money is for regional marketing use. For Jacksonville's Winterfest, indeed, they talked about how well run and well produced these both of these events were, what the panel felt, and they had the potential to be this one, particularly to be at the center of holiday celebrations. They saw this as a strong community event with low generation of room nights, but they had a lot of suggestions about some things that could be done, and I'm confident Susan Baptist's head was spinning after all of that that occurred on there. But they developed, they suggested to develop overnight stay generation plan, including adding a Friday night event um, and enhanced um, competitive activities. They strongly suggested the other enhancement activities that we'll be developing and generating for the organization. Glenn, I have a question. Um, with these recommendations that are, that are uh, being presented, for example, go back to, um, or can we, uh, the uh, the jamboree or whichever, will they have to meet these requirements before? The we conditions execute? would be they have to make substantive progress on these conditions before you would release the money for marketing. But we can't expect everything like consider the enhancements to the performance area. That's not a requirement. That's no, just like a like a over go back to the uh, Winterfest, for example. Develop overnight state generation plan, including adding. That is a document that so looks will that five years into the future. Before? Yes. yes, they would. They could generate that plan before they actually start work on this year's um, funding. Right. So you would see that. Yes. The you would see that. In other words, what they're recommending needs to be in place for this year's funding. That execution. is correct. That is correct. Okay. Did the panel realize that, in particular, in this particular case, that the city council would have to fund recreation at a different level in order to accomplish this? They did not consider that. <coughs> um, I think it was clearly com um, communicated with them that they're at the mercy, that the recreation's right. at the mercy of others. But I don't see anything in here that requires them to do any additional spending. This is the... the the overnight stay generation plan would be something that you would do into the future as to how you might do that. And perhaps th that, that could be presented if there is something that costs money to, to the council for consideration, or they can choose not to do that part. Right, because see, as I read this, is this particular event, obviously they thought it was a good event, had, had some great activities, and, and could generate some overnight stays with some planning. Um, but without that, it may not qualify for funding. They sought to provide a pathway to funding to include items that would 
create um, the tourism, your, what you folks want to see as an end goal. Right. So some of the recommendations are things that they thought would enhance overnight stays into the future. And that's what I'm saying. So for, again, not to pick on this event, but it's the one that just stood out. But for, so in order to get this event funded, they've got to create overnight <coughs> stays somehow to continue into the future. Well, it's obviously all of these are your choices. Well, you know, I understand, but I just want everybody the panel's to, recommendation to be clear is that, on yes. what's going on with these yes. recommendations. That, yes. that these are things to enhance what we're doing in order to fund them, and that's to create those stays. Otherwise, it's a great event, but it's a community event and to be funded from recreation, uh, as an example. And it may still have a tourism value, but it's not generating overnight stays. Exactly. So that's your decision as to how to, what qualification, what criteria you assign to the staff and to others to use as how these things are rated. Amazing. And how they were rating it was what you said was overnight stay generation. I just wanted everybody to be clear on that. Okay. Shall I proceed? Yes, please. Okay. So. Susan is raising her hand. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say, you know, some of the things you mentioned, absolutely, we discussed. That we have um, implemented, like, a, a, a gingerbread contest. We discussed ways of growing that and expanding that. We've implemented an arts and craft program for the entire weekend. We, accept, we, you know, we discussed ways to enhance that and grow that. So, absolutely, we have some plans in place for this particular one. One of the things that I think moving down the road is, what qualifies a significant number of stays? Is it, you know, 10 of them because they're vendors at the Arts and Crafts Fair, or is it, you know, 100 of them coming in from out of the area? So I think that's one of the things that a lot of the valuable conversation we had with the panel was really honing in on ways to enhance what you're trying to do and incubate, and then eventually the five-year plan of what qualifies as a significant number. Because we have people that stay for Winterfest, but I'll be honest, it's not... A high number. Jamboree, right. So I think that, you know, it's all, it's all a good Well, thing. and it ties back to what Glenn was saying. It's, it's, it's a combination of all those things right. for us, you know, what constitutes good tourism, you know. Not necessarily, you know, 500 beds, right. you know, but a, a combination. If you have day trippers, you know, somebody comes in for the day and enjoys the festival and leaves, that's pretty good for us because they're... Sure. Getting gas and probably getting a meal and that's, well, that's, that's tourism. That's the other so. component that because we've concentrated so much and it is occupancy tax money obviously, we concentrated so much on the uh, heads on beds, uh, we tend to overlook the fact that these folks will come to our community and spend money which enhances the um, sales tax revenue. Now, how we get that into this, I have no idea, but a lot of these things just aren't black and white. There is some gray area, and we need to recognize that as this board, and I think we're going to be against the wall a lot of times on some of these events, to be honest with you. Well, we are, but I think it's important to recognize that because from the conversations that we've had with our state people that originally you know, got this tax through, they're very adamant about there are conditions of creating the, this tax, this collectible tax, tax with the hoteliers. And that condition was to use that money for marketing dollars throughout the state and to bring people back in the communities. So it's a fine line of what we may consider tourism and what their original intent was. So we need to find that pathway, and I think we've done a good job. With well, and I think, like Ken said, just to add to that really quick, is when someone comes to the community, if they haven't been here before and they enjoy Winterfest, per se, and then they hear another event promoted, the Jazz Night, maybe that's something they come without their children and they come back and spend the night in the community. So it kind of all ties together, you know, just gaining exposure for our wonderful community. There is, um, <laughs> at, the, at a previous meeting, the attorney told you about what the law said about how you spend the money. And we offered as how there's some clear actions taken by many as to what, what is promotion, what is activities. But the law, as he will say, it left it into the authority's hands to decide how to spend the money. There's, you know, there's very little written guidance as to what to do. 
you folks set the standard. Exactly. And what you told us this time was you want what I previously described as those criteria. And we took that, we took those torches and we, we hung them up on the wall and worshiped them. And, and um, I think you've done a good job. Yeah, I just think for, for general discussion and especially with the TV viewers, it, you know, it, it, it's just not, it, there's just not one component of this. Mm -hmm. There are other components that need to be considered when we decide that we're going to fund or not fund something. And um, that is precisely what Teresa said, what others said too. You get visitors here, they might want to come back. Yeah, and it's exactly. enhancing the visitor experience. So yeah. we trust your judgment in the recommendations made to apply that and to decide what, what guidance you want us to act upon. Well, you're following our instructions. I, there's no question about that. That's fine. Go ahead, please. Okay. <laughs> With the Marine Corps Community Services Grand Prix Series, uh, this was obviously is a strong event that's extraordinarily mature. Um, it produces a significant number of room nights, and it was recommended for $40,000 with conditions, and among them that they consider some sort of family events, um, either on or off the base, um, for those not running. Um, they consider some um, other activities that they have um, put forward. And I might mention at this time, there are other panel recommendations that are out there for each of these events, but some of them would be, um, wouldn't be beneficial if we said them now and somebody else grabbed up the idea for, other than the group for which it was intended. So that's why those are not being um, spoken about out loud at this moment as it is. We want to have a chance for them to see what the recommendations are of the panel and then go forth. If they don't want them, that's that. For the Jazz in the City concert, and I must say they had a lively conversation uh, with the representatives from Jazz in the City on this matter there. And um, it, they, it is still considered as an incubator event. It has produced a moderate number of rooms, uh, but there was a lot of ideas about how this could be brought into a, a manner that would produce significant amount of rooms. Um, it, it was recommended for $15,000 with conditions. And one of those was they have to decide what path they want to do. And the current configuration um, with the date and the location, um, that is not likely to do something that's going to produce, you know, significant overnight stays. And that if they select B with a different, with a growth plan, that is likely to help um, provide some overnight stays. So this speaks as to an event now that is moving toward the end of incubation and must decide how it is they're going to grow or do or be or be sustained. And so that's it. And it was also recommended strongly that they work collaboratively with the specialized cultural outreach firm that has been retained. Mind, body, soul empowerment is another example of an activity that was, it has been described as an incubator that made almost a 90 degree turn at one point and is, is now on a pathway um, to success, it is believed by the panel. They liked this idea, and they felt like um, that the room use being moderate could be improved, and of course recommending the $15,000 with conditions, that they develop a five-year plan with some of those recommendations that the panel put forward, that they advocate for other venues. This is a yet another opportunity for someone much as Jazz in the City, that they're basically outgrowing the current place that they have to operate, and that the marketing funding is for regional and out of the market, and that they work also with a specialized um, outreach, cultural outreach firm as it is there. For the Museum of the Marine um, uh, events, they had actually proposed um, two events, and the group only looked at one of them because the other one had an uncertain date. And so consequently, this is looking at what is the all wars militaria. Sometimes I don't say that word right, Colonel. Um, and um, that um, basically to view this as an incubator, even though it's been operated a couple of times, um, this has, they felt, they were absolutely excited about this project. They felt like this one had a high potential in our community with our brand, um, with other military connections um, to do this. For those that might not know, this is basically what you might think of in the old um, way of a coin show or um, a, um, a gun show, um, but not those things. It's, but it's about military stuff. And so um, there's a lot of people who are enthusiasts um, who want to come see this stuff. Can you stuff. be more descriptive? Yeah. <laughs> yes. no, no, and, and, and um, you know, I, I personally attended the one most recently and um, was amazed at the demographic of the people who were there. It was, it spanned the ages. And it was incredible to see an older person there um, um, looking at some piece of antiquity 
and this um, rather um, a person certainly younger than I punching it into his iPhone to look it up on the web. You know, it was it was really a mixture, and it celebrated those things of which the majority of our community certainly owes a significant amount of its income to. This one, um, we we did. It was quickly developed, and I think the Museum of the Marine people will say this one got put together quickly. They had some ideas and targets and stuff there, but we, you know, a little more firm plan before it's actually developed is something that needs to be done. And they consider some of the ideas that were there as enhancements that were given to them, and that the marketing is for local because you need to build the local audience for this. They were not aware of this whatsoever, and that can be done easily with social and some things, and that it has some regional and very specific marketing uh, for some very specific audiences. The National Night Out. This is for the race that is associated with the, with the National Night Out event. This is running with the law. Uh, the panel saw this as basically a community event. It, um, it has very, very low rooms, but they said there could be some ideas that they gave them as to how to potentially enhance this. Uh, this $9,000 is for two years. As you recall, you agreed to allow us to take applications from July 1 through August 31st of 2017. So this one actually spans two August periods, and that's why the number is, um, is the number that it is there um, for this matter. Um, consequently, with that, they said it's absolutely got to put together an overnight stay generation plan, including some suggestions they had for a Friday night event, and to strongly consider some of the other enhancements that the panel put forward as it is. Oktoberfest was seen as a well-positioned, maturing um, um, festival. Um, they saw this as among the highest, um, uh, um, and I say among the highest um, ones that had draws from our community. Um, it only produces a very low amount of rooms, though. And so consequently, they want to see an overnight state generation plan. They are proposing $16,000 with the conditions and that the marketing be used for regional and out of market. They said that you have to focus on beer, German authenticity, and collaborations with others. And to consider some of the other ideas they had for making this event a premier event, including some management enhancements that would allow them to operate this event in a much more efficient manner and expand it. So now for activities that were not funded within the current year that have applied for funding in your new year is the Jacksonville Music Heritage Festival. This is a new activity, and it has potential to drive overnight stays it is, it, as it is to focus on the heritage of what role Jacksonville has had in music um, development and in while the Marine Corps has been here. Um, there's um, many of you might remember about the Essex, the Lejeune-based Marines who produced a one-hit wonder called Easier Said Than Done. Um, and some other activities that have occurred that's being proposed to bring them back together and to have that showcased here as part of our heritage. There also is a strong connection with the African-American um, um, musical heritage um, trail that's um, in the state that does not continue into Jacksonville. It stops at Kinston, but it, is, it also includes Wellington. So we would like to get on that trail and be a part of that. So this can be a part of a program that would do that. The suggestions they had was to start with smaller events, um, recommend a pairing with Art Block for the reasons stated before, and they suggest that branding be incredibly strong um, and very recognizable because of the nature of what Amer uh, music heritage is might not be known by all. And to demonstrate that they've got the fiscal ability to actually proceed before the marketing money is released, to develop a plan for overnight stay generation, and they did recommend to hire an experienced company with music event management um, to help them operate this event. And this was, um, they also considered it to be an incubator event that would not be funded if overnight stays were not seen or the plan had not been developed. And to consider partnerships with other music producers and to review the other panel recommendations as it is. And the Jacksonville, North Carolina Fashion Week presents Eastern North Carolina International Fashion Weekend. Uh, this is considered a new activity because as um, um, the proposers had put with us, while you had funded this previously, um, it was not with the current configuration of leadership that's there. So this basically resets the clock 
and says this funding is being evaluated on the performance of these people and not those that had operated it in the past. There is a good opportunity for overnight room generation, um, and it, they suggested to do $10,000 with conditions. They identified in the meeting with the panel some deficiencies in the application that they be corrected, and they also identified in their application a management services firm is being retained, and they just need to confirm that and then or provide some other management idea that they have there. Um, they also need to help us with understanding about what role their, their management firm they've retained has with um, co uh, coordinating and planning with media because obviously you folks have said you're going to run all your media through the agency that's retained. And um, again, considered as a first-year event and uh, operated as an incubation activity uh, for this event. Future funding, much as we said with the other activities, will be based on the overnight state generation, the evaluation and reputation, and recommends they review the recommendations before they proceed out there. The Judo Jones Open Judo Championships is a new activity to you. It has operated previously in the community. It has a potential for rooms and was recommended with conditions for to be funded at $10,000. It was strongly suggested coordination with the Sports Commission, um, that its social media be used for local audience development. Um, it must provide some sort of functioning mobile-friendly website or an informative Facebook page and develop strong branding for a unified message. We note here that much like we said that the um, efforts toward um, meeting with the panel would not cost the, or the organizations any money. Um, this is something that we may help them with out of the design fund that you put forward to come up with some marketing material that could be um, um, identifiable. And we suggested that they consider the Grand Prix street crew model um, to recruit teams from other venues such as Myrtle Beach. There's apparently a pretty major event in Myrtle Beach, and why not steal people from there is the concept that was given. So they, um, there are some other recommendations, and it is recommended that the marketing be split between local for social media, regional, and out of market. And Riverwalk Palooza, obviously this was previously operated and previously funded by you. It has a produced low number of rooms, but it has potential. It was recommended for funding of $10,000 with conditions. During the meeting of the panel, they identified some deficiencies in the application, and it was suggested strongly that they develop an overnight stay generation plan. They did um, allow us to how for them to operate some of these ideas that they would need additional management assistance, and that future funding would be based on overnight stay generation and reputation, and they strongly recommended a review of the recommendations from the panels that had been put forth in this matter. And that, I need a glass of water. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, now it comes to your turn to discuss and to do whatever you wish to do on that. So the Carolina word of the month is military stuff. Yeah. I think that describes it just brilliantly. <laughs> <laughs> George Carlin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it all looked like stuff to me. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Glenn, for all that. And... Um, you know, obviously, we've we've put a lot of effort into analyzing, evaluating, you know, seeking outside advice. We want to make sure that we're doing things right, and I think we have. So, um, board, what you have before you is recommendations. You can change any of these at uh, uh, at any at any time now, if that's what you choose to do, or you can uh, recommend the uh, the. Uh, as presented. I have a question. What is regional marketing? What, what comprises regional? Regional marketing would be probably two hours away outside of Jacksonville. Okay. So they could day trip, but some would come overnight. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, in light of the fact that we, this board has been authorized to put all of this stuff together, uh, I am of the mind of accepting their recommendations as presented. Okay. And I That's put that motion. in the form of a motion. Okay, I have a motion on the floor with the recommended <laughs> allocations as presented. So I second. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? <laughs> 
No pressure. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> Any more discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Glenn, you have the marching orders for the distribution. Now, once again, will you, just so that we're clear, on the recommendations that you described to us, who will oversee those recommendations that they're met? Well, that falls on your staff. Okay. And that will happen. Right. I was distracted. Did you did you adopt the recommendations as well as the uh, overarching conditions? No, we haven't done no, that. We haven't okay. Okay. However, Ernie's getting ready to do a motion. Okay. Great. <laughs> He's experienced. Yeah, he is experienced. Definitely make a motion that we adopt all of the overarching Second. conditions. <laughs> 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 Who says we don't have fun at TDA? <laughs> I just want to notice that it's not Kristen and I. No. Nope. <laughs> That's to be determined. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. We have a great collaborative organization in there. You know, we actually have the chairman of the Jacks Alonzo Hospitality Group in the most okay. mix here today. Good. He has a cane and he will use it. <laughs> when would it be possible? for you to uh, put together those overarching conditions and stuff uh, in a document that you could email to all of us? So okay, that we it's, have it. they're contained in here, okay. in the first two, you know, that's that's what this is here. You page two, two is the overarching. Like that, yeah. you, okay. right. it's, uh, this is good for me. Okay, great. And again, for those watching, it's on our web, it's, it's right there in the Granicus for you. And I will say, I know that we have uh, folks in the room that represent some of these uh, uh, activities and you know we hope that we represent you all well I know it may not be all that you asked for and in some cases there's more than what you've asked for uh, you know but we are committed you know this team is committed uh, to helping you um, and to provide uh, great activities for our community and, and again we do have a responsibility I hope you understand that and we're trying our best to be transparent and to and to give and to give you all what you need to be successful because at the end we'll all be successful when, when when we work together like that so again those of you that are here thank you um, you are all set you're welcome to stay if you'd like if, if not we, we appreciate y'all coming but we're going to continue on um, strategic initiative fund Glenn okay and that is what we're going to talk about now Okay. And this is where I told you before we were looking for ideas. We have received um, a proposal to expand sport events. We have received, um, we know that um, there's a, sorry about that, that got messed up there. <laughs> we have another proposal for a river taxi. We're expecting one on docents, reunion services, a military comedy festival, the base tour, and some new festival ideas in there. So I apologize about that duplication there. So... We have two in hand. Um, there's a lot of interest in some other things, such as signage, architectural tour, and um, also there was uh, one in there about a military film festival, but um, we haven't had anybody come forward with that at this time as it was. Um, <clears throat> as to the status and partner events, that's for you to call on those people. Okay. Ashley? Hi. You're up. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, so we are hosting our Hall of Fame banquet this Thursday. Um, God, it's like two days away. Uh, we have already gotten uh, Benji Taylor will be coming into town. He's staying overnight. There's been some other rooms booked already with people coming in um, to celebrate him, Homer, and obviously the late Quincy Monk. So we're excited about that event, um, and it will be at the Courtyard by Marriott at 640. The program will officially start. Uh, Kristen will touch on some of the stuff because we've got a great partnership mm -hmm. going on. So I um, just want to mention that Marine Corps Air Station New River will be hosting Red Bull Rally Cross. Mm -hmm. um, the actual event great will be event. on, yes, a wonderful yeah. event, July 2nd and 3rd. Um, they've been wanting to get more in front of the community. That's been one of their big initiatives. So we've been working with tourism on different ways to do that. Um, our dealerships that are actually the manufacturers of those cars um, on some different ideas, and so far everybody's been very accommodating and very welcoming and exciting about the event. So we're um, looking forward to moving forward on that. Um, we will be hosting the site team from U.S. Quidditch next week. 
Um, we have been selected as a finalist for the Mid-Atlantic Regional of that event for 2016. It would be hosted in November, either the second or third week. Um, again, this is 22 to 26 collegiate Quidditch teams. Um, co-ed that would be coming in from North Carolina all the way up through Maryland. Um, it's based off of Harry Potter because there's a lot of giggling going Don't on. Ask. Uh, <laughs> Don't ask. The, the room is a <laughs> Um, watch the movie The Intern? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or watch The Intern. That's how one of our board members knew about it. Um, so we're excited to have them in. We weren't expecting to be uh, one of the site finalists, but again, um, it at least gives us the opportunity to showcase the area. Uh, we'll give them about two or three different venues to host in. Um, we've got a couple of businesses on board with really kind of playing up the whole theme and being a part of that welcome visit and really showing um, what Jacksonville and Onslow County is all about. Could we have more brooms than the other communities? Is that why we got selected? <laughs> um, no, actually, I think this is strictly out of a partnership. I mean, it's been one of those that we've been trying to um, get meet with them and have them come in for the past, you know, two years mm -hmm. during different things. So, um, and it's PVC pipes now. We had a long discussion at lunch about their move away from brooms and, yeah, um, things that you never thought your board would ever talk about. Um, the East Coast Invitational, in partnership with the City of Jacksonville um, and their facility, as well as Onslow County Schools, will be coming in the 14th through the 17th of July. They did go through the expansion, so we're hosting 32 teams from across the state. Um, it is an NCAA-sanctioned event. Um, it's my understanding that we have a very strong recruit um, coming out of Cox Mills that Carolina's after, so we're expecting Carolina to be present in the gyms. Um, during that, as well as a couple of kids from the Kinston um, and some of the other schools. So we're expecting a large turnout from the colleges um, in the recruiting realm, and they will be hosting at Jacksonville Commons Recreation Center, Commons Middle School, Northside High School, and then Jacksonville High School has stepped up to host the um, other round of eight. Um, we have the football jamboree coming up in August, um, as well as Battle at the Beach coming up in August. So again, more kind of getting ready for the high school seasons and allowing those kids to come into the community and compete, um, which, you know, we're very good at that. I think that's kind of our niche market, so looking for, you know, more expansion opportunities. And then we've talked a lot about Meeting Max, um, and obviously it's been a part of the plans. They actually went ahead and started the build. Um, the build's done. So they've already contacted me and sent me. We have some information sheets and some other things that we have to send back to them, but they're ready to go ahead and get on webinars and start the training um, so that we can get that up and running. I mean, potentially we could go as early as mid-July um, if we kind of run on it and devote a lot of time um, into that. So I'm thinking probably more so to August 1 time period and give us a little bit of time on that one. But I'll keep you guys updated. But, yeah, they were very excited and without money, had already started building. So I was pretty <laughs> impressed with them. I was like, that's pretty trusting. Awesome. <laughs> you wanna, uh, Ashley, you want to plug uh, the Hall of Fame? You did. Oh, did she? Yeah. Did she? I missed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> did you get yeah, so Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Yep, Thursday. And, um, you know, if you get a chance to come over to the Commerce Center, we've redone the Sports Hall of Fame room. So it's Southern Touch Painting, just redid a whole painting. Vital Signs is obviously doing the signage for us, um, but Coastal Bank and Trust, we're doing a whole refresh for our 15 year anniversary. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to have Mr. Hagen as our MC, um, but. I know, so depressing, but we wanted him to enjoy the event as one of our Hall of Fame members. So Jones Angel, the play-by-play um, -play -play announcer for Carolina football and men's basketball, will actually be our MC for the Ashley, event. what time? Um, doors open at 5, dinner's at 5.30, program starts at 6.40. Um, if anyone's interested, don't just say, yes, you're coming on our Facebook page and expect <laughs> us to have a ticket for you. Um, please contact our office because it is a catered meal. Um, so we need to get numbers in. We've already done a preliminary, so we're kind of on our last few minutes to get that done. Thank you, Ashley. Any questions? Thank you. Kristen? Um, so I'll start with the Red Bull thing, like Ashley mentioned. Um, the nice part is we're running a social media contest, and we were going to ask the hotels to be involved, and they can't be because they're packed out, mm -hmm. which is fabulous for the entire community. Um, but what's even better is that with it being community support, they're going to actually have events throughout starting like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, so it's going to be nice to be able to get more of the community out and go. Um, but be on the lookout. We're going to start a social media contest, and it's trying to draw people from other communities to come in so they'll experience this. Because not everybody gets to go on to a Marine Corps base 
on a regular basis, and so it, very, it interests a lot of people. And we'll set that up, and it's going to start to run. And if you know somebody who may be interested, all they have to do is just enter, and then they may be chosen. And so then that way it gives it, and we have access to two premium tickets, and they'll be able to bring somebody in, and they're going to get kind of, um, we're working with Red Bull hand-in-hand hand to get some um, nice things to go along with it to entice them. Um, of course, Cycle and C is coming in in October. And what's really nice is that um, Visit North Carolina has also contacted us about they're going to bring a side tour as well. So a lot of the cyclists will have their family with them, and they're going to um, bring a motor coach and bring them, and they're going to go out to Hammocks Beach State Park and be able to actually experience Swansboro as well. Oh, yeah. So not only will the cyclists be riding throughout our streets and in through the county past Swansboro, but their family and their friends are going to be able to also experience a little portion of our county. And that's going to go back to what Teresa was talking about, where you kind of give them a little taste, and hopefully they will come back and spend more time with us. Um, working with uh, Pender County Tourism and Greater Topsail, um, there will be an announcement very shortly. We're going to go into a partnership, and we're going to have a Jeep Week at the end of September into October. And it's going to be really great because it's going to be able to be family-friendly and it's going to draw a lot of the younger crowds, have them come out. Um, it will take all of Topsail Island to do it, thus the partnership. Um, and we're actually going to meet and some ideas are going to come about. So just to put that on your radar, that's going to happen. Um, we're disqualified. We're you can come out if you have a Jeep. Also don't have a no. Chance. If you have a Jeep, like, you're allowed. If you have allowed. a Jeep, you're allowed. There you go. Okay. <laughs> A Jeep I mean, suit overrides the age. It's family friendly. There you go. Family being everyone. <laughs> um, of course, uh, the Montfort Point Marines National Convention will be here in late July. Um, they are selling out a lot of our rooms as well with um, their hotels, so that's going to be great. Um, and I'll plug the dedication ceremony out. It's going to be Friday the 29th at 9 a.m. So please come out. They're going to dedicate that memorial. It's beautiful. So it please, beautiful. we encourage everybody to come out, be a part of that. Um, and then outside of that, we are just reevaluating where we're going to spend our marketing money, make some changes to uh, see how we can continue to grow. And we're collaborating together, I'm assuming, on that. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. When's the dedication? 29th of June? The 29th of July. 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 I'm sorry. 29th of July <laughs> at 9 a.m. Thank you, Kristen. Great Thank job. Um, board members? Open up any, any comments. The only thing that you know that I want to add is uh, uh, to thank our staff. Um, you know, Glenn and, and Gail, and I'm not sure whoever helps. Mr. Weeks over here. There's a lot of work that uh, that gets done in putting all these things together, and there's a lot, a lot of work. And amongst Glenn's other duties, uh, this is a big part of it. So. It does take a lot of resources to continue to to move this uh, vehicle along. So thank you, uh, Glenn, and, and, and your team that that helps keep this thing moving. So I want John, to give thank a you. A lot of credit also. Susan Baptist has been a good ally Wonderful. for us. Thank you, Susan. And, um, we've appreciated her. If we could spend real fast a moment on the spending plan, um, if that's all right with you, Mr. Chairman. Please. Um, we, you have talked in the past about um, wayfinding and some things such as that, and we're happy to tell you, you know, this is what you previously looked at and, and agreed to as concepts here and some things like that, to what you could have in the downtown area, out at the gardens, doing some things like that for, for wayfinding as it is. And, of course, this was one that, um, again, speaking to Susan, she particularly liked when this was revealed um, some time ago, um, that this would be right there at the intersection of North um, Gateway Drive and um, what now is the end of the parkway. Many of you already know the parkway is eventually going to be extended, so it goes out to, um, it's not Ramsey Road. Drummer Kellum. Drummer Kellum Road. And, um, you know, so it would be there. And so this is going to be a pretty significant intersection. And so we've, um, we've um, advanced um, ideas as to how it might look um, there. And this is a rough drawing of that. Um, and so, consequently, um, we're, we're advancing, and we have, some, we have some pricing, we have some ideas, and this might be something you wish to consider in your spending plan um, for, the, for, the, for the next year, as it was. Um, there is, um, 
Um, also in the spending plan is how you would designate the two-thirds and the one-third money. And um, so consequently, um, any good advice and counsel that you might have for us, um, this is a good time to give us that as we develop that plan. Glenn, can you put those back up, please, and go back to the downtown wayfinding? What, what do we need to do to move this along? Fund it. That we're at the funding stage now? Yes. Okay. Because I personally would like to see this move along. I think we're ready, uh, overdue, and it's a piece of the puzzle that we've really got to sort of put in place. Um, any thoughts or discussion? So what's the, where, where does that show up? Which it's not it's not there yet. We're yeah. putting it together, and that's so what we don't asking. have a price tag for it yet. We have we can bring you a price tag. We have a working concept of what it could be spent. And um, we could um, use a sum of money until we exhaust that and then come back and ask you and say, do you, you know, what could we get done? Is, is this expected to be completely funded by TDA or is the city involved with this? Um, I think if you wish to see this done, it's going to need to be funded by the TDA. Okay. And we believe we can do that. Um, but I guess my point is we're ready for this. It's a, we're overdue. You know, uh, again, we're, we're working so hard and spending so much money, building memorials, trying to get people here, activities. We need this so that when people come to our community, number one, they know where they're going, and number two, it gives them the right feel when they enter our community and try to find their way around. Um, we really need to get moving with this. And this comes from the one-third money. Uh, we believe that you could use promotion funds to this and that it's promoting, um, particularly um, the Not sign is, um, you know, we spend money on billboards and things right. such as that. And, um, you know, obviously this will be your own billboard that you'll be able to promote. So it come out as a two-thirds money. Two-thirds yes. money, yes. Oh. Okay. Um, how soon can you make a... How, can well, we do we, this next month? Well, we have to probably put a conceptual dollar amount as a budgetary item and then go out for bid, obviously, is... But I mean, we can review this next yeah. month. Yeah. We intend to present you a spending plan at your, at your next meeting. Okay. That basically will set the money aside for the project. Oh, I think but it's obviously fantastic. we have to we go through the process of getting bids and... When we were developing the commons, one of the original plans was to have a sign, not like that, obviously. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we didn't even have the funding back then to even do that. So we'll bring something back as part of that spending plan for, for your review. Okay. Any other comments? All right. I'll we'll need a is motion there anything, Is there anything else you want to do with any of the spending for the current year? Well, isn't there something... Is there something with the Jacksonville Visitor Center that we need to? Oh, you God, haven't. Yeah, you all right. haven't designated any funding. I'm sorry. We do. Yeah. Thank um, you for reminding me. We we need to, or I would recommend that we allocate fifty thousand dollars of the current year funds for our visitor center from our FY16 money. Um, to you know, instruct staff to prepare the FY17 spending plan with the allocations that are pledged and not to exceed the $50,000 for the visitor center. That's that's another project we've got to move forward. Right. Don't we want to do this for two years? Yeah, we need to well, do it we for are. two years. So, mm -hmm. so I'd like to make a motion to allocate 50000 to the Jacksonville Visitor Center out of the unspent FY16 tourism-related funds. And, and FY17. Should we do two motions or just one? No, let's do one. And to... Uh, allocate 50000 to the Jacksonville Visitor Center out of the unspent, uh, I already said that, and to instruct the staff to prepare the FY17 spending plan with allocations previously pledged and the remainder to the Visitor Center not to exceed 50000 50000 yep, that's it. That's so that takes care of FY16 and, and FY17. 17. Second that motion. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries on that. Um, I think we have covered everything. If not, we didn't miss much. I'll need a motion to adjourn. Uh, you have them in your agenda. We yeah, it's already in there.
Yeah, there he is. You got it? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. You want to go through it? No, no thank you. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for the pub. No, let's let's go through it for the public's um, information. Glenn, very quickly. So, um, our collections. Yes, um, collections are are, are running at, um, about nine percent less than what the previous year was. We're down just a tad. Nine percent. To this point in the year. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the market trending at? Well, I think that um, our neighbors to the left there can speak of that. But what we're seeing is a is a high stratification of the market uh, among some of the f lodging facilities. Those that are in um, a top uh, one tier are seeing the significant amount of money coming in, and um, they are staying full, are doing well. And then we see this mid-level in there, and um, there some of them are suffering, as it was. And then there's a, another level of pricing and activity there, and some of them are doing okay, and um, they've um, they've been able to keep their facilities operating in a positive manner. So that's interesting. What 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 does that say? I'm wondering. What do you tourism? I think the people? newest the newest facilities obviously get a lot of attraction, and so you've created this leveling of the newer facilities versus some that were had been here for a while but had not been kept up. So the people that would stay at mid level now would bump up, spend a little bit more to go to the nicer one. Mm -hmm. And those that and might have stayed at some bargain prices they'll are always staying stay at the at bargain, bargain prices. Well, That's we, interesting. Some of that I think comes from the branding too, because we, we have some motels now that we didn't previously have that have high end names and People coming from out of town are used to staying at a Marriott or a Hilton or a. And they you know, all have like those. rewards. Yeah. So like Hilton reward people oh, are going right. to stay at Hilton. Hilton Marriotts rewards. are going to stay at Marriotts. Yeah. And, and the other interesting thing too is that way. I see a lot of contractors still here. At one time we thought, well, a lot of the contracts are kind of finishing up, and we would mm -hmm. see some uh, vacancies there, but. We don't, I haven't they're, seen that. They're doing military stuff. <laughs> and that's a good that's a good thing, I guess. So they're still here and they're still doing something. So that's that's a that's a good thing. I, I, I would just like to say that what I've noticed is that there are a couple of hotels that have renovated uh, themselves. Uh, uh, I mean, that really look nice now. Yeah. They're older hotels. Yeah. Uh, I know. Facelift uh, for sure. Yeah, they facelift on Oslo Drive and. Uh, I think uh, that hotel, although it was shut down for, I think, a little while, I think uh, it's coming on now. It really looks good. Yeah. So there's some that are refurbishing. I know. I, I don't remember what I was doing, but I was out on a Sunday morning a couple of weeks ago and just happened to go by two or three motels, and I was amazed at the number of cars that were in the parking lot. It wasn't a, it wasn't a holiday weekend. It wasn't a, any special weekend, but the parking lot was full. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, meeting's adjourned. Thank you. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> well done. All over those.